So B, strong field Zeeman. So what did we say we would do? We would have H0 plus E over 2MC B LZ plus 2SZ B. This would be our H0 check, I called it, plus delta H fine structure 1. And uh, we said, what we have to do now is strong field Zeeman is more important than fine structure. So we first have to get the strong field Zeeman figured out with the bare bones hydrogen atom, what it does. And then on those states, we will do perturbation theory for fine splitting. So it is redoing fine splitting, and you say, oh my god, that's hard. We spend the whole lecture doing that. Well, second time you do things, they go a little faster, so it's not that bad. But here there's something uh, quite remarkable. This was supposed to be your known Hamiltonian. You say, no, it's not known. I have never solved this before. Um, on the other hand, when we had H0 plus delta H1, a uh, fine structure, we did struggle and we found those states, approximate states. Here the situation happily is surprisingly simple. And one reason for that is the following. That against perhaps your initial impression, this can be solved exactly. You don't even need perturbation theory to add this term. What? Yes, this Hamiltonian commutes with H0. Isn't that right? Uh, H0 is rotational invariant, so it commutes with any j. And certainly H0 has nothing for spin. It's a one matrix there. So this commutes with the Hamiltonian. So it's possible that you can diagonalize this completely. Simultaneous eigenstates of the first part and the second part, so simultaneous eigenstates from all of those. But the news is even better. Your uncoupled states, states, N, L, M, L, M, S, those were eigenstates, exact eigenstates of H0, the all good old hydrogen atom. But actually, they are exact eigenstates of LZ and exact eigenstates of SZ. So they're exact eigenstates of the Zeeman Hamiltonian. So these states are it. These are these exact states of H0 hat. These are exact eigenstates. Eigenstates of H0 check. I'm sorry, it was not hat. With eigenenergies. As follows. There are no mystery, the eigenenergies. They're very simple. The eigenenergies are E, N, L, M, L, M, S. Exact are E, N, zero. The ones that the hydrogen atom has that don't depend on any of these other things. Plus E, B over 2, M, C. E H bar B over 2 M C, M L plus 2 M S. So this uh, deserves perfectly the name of known Hamiltonian. 
That was not the case for weak Zeeman. In weak Zeeman, we had this one and this one, and that was the approximately known Hamiltonian to which we added the weak Zeeman. Here, it's this perfectly known Hamiltonian to which we have to now add fine structure. So maybe the last thing that helps you visualize what's going on is to understand what happens to the splittings. Because you're going to have to do fine structure splitting. And fine structure, again, you will have to ask, can I use non-degenerate perturbation theory, or can I not use it? So you need to know what happened with the degeneracies after you add this term. Are all the degeneracies of the hydrogen atom broken by this term, or do some survive? If they survive, is fine splitting diagonal in those degenerate subspaces or not? So the most important thing is figuring out what are the degenerate subspaces after you've added this term. This is intuitively what you have to do. If you approach this problem, OK, I now have to compute fine structure on a new basis, and you have no idea what the new basis is, you're proceeding a little bit with your eyes covered. You should always try to make things a little more concrete. So look at the n equal 2 states. You have L equals 0 and L equals 1. Here you have six states. Remember, there's spin. There's two states here. Um, the two states of L equals 0 have ms equal 1 half and ms equal to minus 1 half. So they're going to split. This number is going to be either plus 1 or minus 1, and they're going to split. And here, so this is plus 1 on this factor here, this number, or minus 1 for that number. For these states of L equals 1, ML, for example, can be 1 and ms plus 1 half, so 1 plus 1 is 2. So, so there's a state at 2. ml equals minus 2, minus 1, and this minus 1 half gives you minus 2. So that's another state. You can have um, more states. For example, if you take ML equals 1 and MS equals to minus 1 half, you get a 0. But you can also have ML equals minus 1 and this plus 1 half, plus 1 half, which also gives you 0. So here there's a degeneracy. There are six states. You will see that there's one here and one there. So here is the nature of the degeneracy. The six states have split like that. There's a degeneracy across L multiplets. And there's a degeneracy within L multiplets. So two types of degeneracies, and that's what you will have to consider when you think of the fine splitting. Uh, in fact, uh, the problem in the homework gives uh, some sort of trickery to evaluate this expectation value with a little less work than the traditional method, but still asks the question whether you can use degenerate or non-degenerate perturbation theory. And that's an interesting question. And this example can help you visualize a little better what kind of degeneracies you have. OK. We're concluding a chapter in the history of 806. Uh, we're done with perturbation theory, and we're done with hydrogen atom for the moment. <laughs>